This video was supposed to just be a documentation of a crow hunt I was having to remove uh, one pest bird. There were many crows in the area, but only one bird was really giving my garden trouble. And the purpose of this was to document me getting rid of that bird. And then the hopeful success of my garden as a result. But it turned into a fascinating lesson in pellet ricochet, uh, energy, and shot placement. The truth is, I kind of like crows, actually. Um, you know, they're a lot like people. They're opportunistic and individual and devious, and uh, I kind of admire them. So, at first, I tried to just deter them. I um, used one of these. However, I am not as good a throw as Randy Johnson. So this guy would just flee to the top of the trees, probably said some swear words and crow talk, and came down as soon as I'd been inside for a couple hours. And one day, when I caught him in the act and chased him up into the tree, I actually got a shot off at him, and I completely choked on this shot. I'll show it to you, because that's what I always do, show you guys the misses as well as the hits. And from here on out, he was wise to the fact that I had a gun. So I had to up my game and hide in the tool shed to, to get a shot from cover. However, sneaky as I was, this guy caught sight of me and quickly jumped behind the larger branches like he always does, blocking my line of sight to him. But knowing the curiosity of the crow, I decided to just maybe see if I could get him to peek his head out one time for me. So I made this sound, and I'm not proud of this sound, it's kind of embarrassing actually. <laughs> but it was enough to get the crow to look. Here it is. <coughs> Sounds pretty weird, right? The crow thought so too, and he popped his head out, giving me a shot. But it had now been many minutes since I'd been standing there, offhand, holding the gun up. I was fatigued. I was also very excited. When I finally took the shot, I pulled it to the left, and I thought, certainly I had lost him again. The pellet impacted the stick right in front of him, and my instant thought was, another ricochet and this guy gets away. But then to my disbelief, he dropped like a stone. I ran around out front immediately, expecting to have to follow up with another shot, but he was lying there stone dead on the ground, without a movement. I looked him over, and I couldn't see any blood. I couldn't see any entry wound, any exit wound. I was completely confused. So, I investigate. So how do you know where you hit the crow? Well, you gotta get his feathers off. Plucking a crow is not my favorite thing to do in the whole world, but I was curious enough to get an answer. I really wanted to know where this crow took the hit. And I did make a point of letting all this guy's buddies see me handle him. I let them all know that I was the one that did this, and if they come back, they're gonna get more of it. They were really pissed off, but I have not seen one land in our area since then. In fact, they don't even land in the trees anymore. They just fly right over, or sometimes they actually deliberately go around the airspace. When I got all his feathers off, I saw that it looked like the impact of the pellet went right through his heart. This confused the heck out of me because his heart was behind a major tree limb. Um, the ricochet must have sent it in that direction. But what's more is, I've heard many people say how a heart shot is not instant. It's not humane. It's not an instant kill. It's not a one shot, one kill. Everybody seems obsessed with headshots, headshots. And this bird dropped like a rock with a heart shot. The pellet must have lost considerable energy traveling through the stick. It probably then tumbled after that and still had enough energy to go all the way through the bird and kill him stone dead. This has got to be a wake-up call to all the naysayers out there who think that a heart and lung shot is somehow not a proper shot for hunting. It absolutely is, and this proves it. So if we go back and look at the video, we can deduce that the pellet took this trajectory after striking through the limb. My autopsy of the crow showed that the pellet had in fact completely penetrated his upper heart and that all bl bleeding had been done internally, which is why I had none on my hands and there was none on the feathers of the crow. 
everything had been completely contained. Which I'm not going to show you because I'm afraid YouTube will ban my video if I cut open the crow. I don't know if the message got through to his buddies, but if crows are as smart as everyone says they are, they spread the message and they'll find a source of food someplace other than our sweet corn. Until next time, thanks for watching.